Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about how you can integrate Twitter authentication in Blazor WebAssembly applications. First, I'm going to need to create an app on its developer portal where I'll get the API key and API secret key, which I'm going to use in my project for integrating Twitter authentication. For that, I'm going to follow these steps. First, I'm going to add those keys in app settings.json on the server side. Then I'm going to install Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication Twitter package on the server side. Then I'm going to add authentication support in the startup class. And then I'm going to write a web API call, which I'm going to name it as Twitter sign in in the controller. And then I'm going to call this web API from the client side. For that, I'm going to add a Twitter login button on the client side. Once I follow all these steps, then I should be able to log in with Twitter authentication in my Blazing Chat application. So let's first create that app on the developer portal and then we'll make some code changes to integrate Twitter authentication. For creating an app on its developer portal, you'll have to go to this link. I'll share this link in the video description and then go to developer portal where you'll see all of your projects. I've created a project which is Blazing Chat and I added this Blazing Chat app, which I used it for signing in with Twitter in the first episode to show the demo. But I'm going to create a new app that I can create from project and apps and I'll go to the overview. And here I have an option to create a standalone app. So I'm going to click on create app and which will ask me the name of the app. I'm going to name it as Blazing chat demo demo and click on complete and when i click on complete it creates api key api secret key and better token api key and api secret key is what we're going to use in our project to sign in the user into the system we are not going to use better token because this token better tokens are usually used for authorizing the user and we are not authorizing the user we are authenticating the user i'm not sure if ASP.NET Core Twitter authentication package even supports Twitter's better token as of yet. So I'm just going to select API key and API secret key in my project for signing in user with Twitter authentication. We do need to make some more changes that I'm going to do in the app settings. So I'm going to click on app settings here and go to authentication settings and click on edit. Here I'm going to uh, enable three-legged authentication. That means I can post tweets on behalf of other accounts too. And uh, whenever you enable that, then only you can request email address of the user and you can also enter the callback URL, website URL and other details too. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to select callback URL as HTTPS localhost 5001 sign in Twitter. Localhost 5001 is the domain name, which is the current domain name in the development. But whenever you push this application, we are going to push this application on Azure at the end of the video series. That time the domain name is going to change and that time this is going to get replaced with whatever the domain name is going to be at that time. But you can add more callback URLs here if you want to. So you can use one app in different development regions too. But just make sure that whatever the domain name is, you have to put forward slash sign in dash twirl in front of it so that the ASP.NET Core package understand what the callback URL is and where it should grab tokens and use it for authentication. So this should be the callback URL. The website URL is going to be qsdrive.com, organization name is qsdrive, organization URL is going to be qsdrive.com. And they also ask for terms of service and privacy policy that you can get it from termsfeed.com. I already have an account here. So I'm going to try and generate terms and conditions and privacy policy and then put them here so that I'll be done with creating the app uh, on my developer portal here. So I'm going to go to terms and conditions and here I'm going to select website, click on next. Uh, the website URL is going to be the same. I'm going to copy that, paste it here. The website name is going to be QS Drive. I'm an individual. I live in Pennsylvania. Next. And then I'm going to select all the free options here because I don't need to add these terms and conditions in my terms and conditions. So I'm going to select no in all the places. I'm just signing in user into the system. And if you want to contact us, then you can contact us as qsdrive at gmail.com. 
and click on next and here i have an option to generate terms and condition for zero dollars so whenever i click on generate it will generate terms and condition link so i can copy that and i can paste it here similarly of terms of terms of services i can also create privacy policy for that i'm going to go back to terms and fee terms feed here on the home page and click on pri privacy policy on select website um the url name is going to be again to your stripe so i'm going to copy that and paste it here and then i can grab the website name i can put it there i'm an individual i live in pennsylvania i'm going to click on next and uh, I'm be, i'll be collecting email address and i'm going to select other options as no because i don't want to pay for these services select if you use any of the following providers we are not using any of the following providers but i'm going to select mouse flow because it gives me error whenever i try to go to the next page i'm going to select no here i'm going to select no no and the email address is going to the same gmail.com i'm going to click on next step and you can generate privacy policy for zero dollars when i click on generate it will give me a link i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste it here and save it once i do that then all the changes will be saved and now i have this app that i can use for authenticating user on my on my blazing chat application and if i want to view keys and tokens i can go to keys and tokens tab here and click on view keys and then you can grab your api key and api secret key from here that we're going to use in our project Just like I've mentioned in the slides, I'm going to follow these steps to integrate Twitter authentication in my project. The first step is to add keys in appsettings.json. For that, I'm going to go to my server project and open appsettings.json file here. And I'm going to add some fields here, which could hold API key and API secret key. And it's going to look something like this. The reason why I've structured it this way so that I could add Google and Facebook authentication too, and now I can store Twitter's consumer key and consumer secret in these fields. For that, I'm gonna to go to my developer portal, my Twitter developer portal, and go to keys and tokens tab and click on view keys, which will give me API key and API secret key. I'm gonna grab the API key and paste it in consumer key. And then I'm gonna grab API key secret and then put it in my consumer secret here. Once I'm done with that, then I'm going to need to install Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication Twitter package that you can get it from this link. I'll mention this link in the video description. I'll grab this uh, package reference and go to my server project and add that package in the project file. Once I'm done with that, then I'm going to need to add Twitter authentication support in startup.c as well. For that, I'm going to go to my startup file here and wherever we added authentication support for custom authentication, we can add Twitter authentication support on top of that, which is going to look like this. I'm going to copy some code and paste it here. It says to add authentication here, add Twitter authentication with these options, where the options are consumer key and consumer secret, which we are grabbing from our app settings, which is authentication twitter consumer key it gets it from authentication twitter consumer key and then it gets the consumer secret and puts it into twitter options too we are also telling it to get more information for the user so that we could get its email address and store it in our database and that's the reason why i've said retrieve user detail to true once you're done with that then we're going to need to add a web api call in the controller which is going to be twitter sign in so for that, I'm going to go to my uh, user controller, go to my user controller, and I'm going to grab any HTTP GET method, and I'm going to use that for writing this new web API. I'm going to remove all the lines from here. And the new web API is not going to return anything. It's not going to take anything as parameter. And the name of the web API is going to be Twitter sign-in. So I'm going to grab that and I'll put it here. And even the URL for calling this web API is going to be Twitter sign-in. And in this web API, I want my HTTP context to challenge async using Twitter's authentication scheme. For that, I'm going to say await. 
await HTTP, HTTP context, challenge async. And here I can pass the scheme. I can pass the scheme and authentication property. Here I'm gonna pass Twitter's default, default authentication scheme. For that, I'll have to bring in a namespace, which is going to be Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication Twitter, that the package that we added. Uh, I'm gonna grab that, and then I'm gonna say, uh, I wanna use this default authentication scheme. And then it's gonna ask us uh, the authentication property, which is going to be the redirect URL. It's going to ask us where do you want to redirect to once you log in. And for that, I'm gonna say authentication property is going to have a redirect uh, URI. And I want user to be on the profile page whenever it gets logged in. And that's why I'm gonna say redirect URI is going to be profile. And that's all you need to do on the server side to integrate Twitter sign-in on, uh, on your application. Now we are going to need a button, a Twitter login button on the client side so, so that we could call this web API. For that, I'm gonna first add a button here on the login page, which is going to look nicer. For that, I'm gonna add some CSS, which we can do it in our index.html file here. So index.html file here, I'm gonna add some CSS files, which are going to be bootstrap social and font awesome. So I'm gonna grab the CSS files and add them here. One is going to be a bootstrap social and another is going to be font awesome. Once I'm done with that, then I can go to my login page. I can go to my login page. And here I can add Twitter button, which is going to look like this. It's going to look like this. It uses a button social, the social bootstrap, social CSS, and then font awesome CSS so that it looks nicer. And then whenever you click on it, it calls a local method, which is going to be named as Twitter signing. So let's go ahead and create that method. I'm going to go to my code behind here and say private void Twitter sign in. And whenever this gets called, I would like to navigate to that web API, which is going to be user forward slash Twitter sign in. And whenever you navigate, we would like to force reload this so that it could get the call back and the tokens and everything that it needs to log in into the system. And that's all you need to do to integrate Twitter authentication on your Blazor WebSMB application. Let's run this and see if that works or not. So I'm gonna rerun the project. I'm gonna refresh this page. Now I have this sign in Twitter button. Whenever I click on it, it takes me to the profile page, but it's throwing an exception. The reason why it's throwing an exception is because whenever I log in, it will go to get current user from custom authentication state provider. And the user that I'm logging in is not there in the database. That's why it's throwing an exception, but we can fix that problem. Let's go ahead and fix that. So in custom authentication state provider, whenever I call get authentication state async, I'm calling get current user. And if I go to my server project here, if I go to my server project here, the current user is pulled in from the database, but this user is not there in the database. So this is going to be null, and that's why we are getting the error. Let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna say whenever current user is equal, equal to null, then we would like to first initialize current user, which is going to be new, new user, new user. And then I'm going to set current user email address. I can get it from its claims type. So I'm going to crop this line. I'm going to say user dot find first claims type, and it's going to be email. And uh, the user ID, I'm going to set it to 10. I'm going to have to hard code this value. And we'll fix this whenever we register the user, when, we're, when we sign up the user, once we are done with Facebook and Google authentication. I'm gonna create an episode on signing up user and that's when we'll fix this issue. And that's all you need to do to fix that exception. Let's run, rerun this and see if that works or not. So if I refresh the page, now it's going to go to QSDrive at gmail.com. I can log out from here and log in, try to log in with John Smith. 
I can log in with John Smith. And then if I try to log in with Julius Caesar, I should be able to log in with Julius Caesar. The first time you log in, the page is going to look different. I'm going to show you. I'm going to first go to my Twitter and then revoke that application. For that, I think you go to settings and privacy and then additional apps and sessions. And then I'm going to remove this blazing chat demo and revoke access. And once I do that, then I can go to my browser. And if I click on the sign in with Twitter, then it's going to ask me to authorize the app. It's asking if I want to authorize this app or not. I'm going to say I would like to authorize this app and then I can get into the system. And that's how it looks for the first time. So yeah, that's how you can integrate Twitter authentication on in your Blazor WebAssembly application. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section of this video or you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. Thanks for watching this one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.